Welcome to episode 107 of Broad Street Hustle. I'm your host, Tommy Nanny. We have uh, our the OG staff tonight uh, to talk PGA Championship and Preakness. We're only going to cover just the Preakness, but we will do a horse-by-horse -horse analysis. And we're going to start with the PGA Championship. Uh, we do not have our special guest due to uh, scheduling conflicts where we are taping a couple days earlier than we normally do. And with golf, we always have to kind of move it up anyway because it does start on Thursday. But we do got the OG staff, like I said. Got on um, with me, Jason Saturday. Hey, Tom. What's up? Jason, how are you? And Jimmy the Chalk. What's up, Tom? What's up, Chalky? All right, let's kick it off with the PGA. Do not know which uh, PGA this is. Anybody know? Uh, that's for Chalky. I don't know. It's, it's a lot. I don't yeah. know. A good so we, they're at uh, Valhalla, I believe is the pronunciation, yes. where they did play in 2014, I want to say, the last time the PGA was here in downtown Louisville. Um, so we were, a couple weeks ago, we were in Louisville for the Derby, and now we're back for the PGA. And this happens to be the same week as the Preakness. Uh, but as we always do, we start with our um, draft, uh, where we go six rounds and pick guys, and I believe we do lowest score. We knock one guy off, right? Your worst player gets kicked off, and then uh, we do the worst. If you two guys miss the cut, then that guy gets the worst score of the tournament or whatever it is. Is that is that what we decided? I, I did. I did see a, uh, somebody sent me something uh, today with a, the same sort of format you know, contest. Like yeah, but when two guys miss the cut, you got disqualified. Yeah, I mean, we only got three guys this time, so we're gonna get the like. Yeah, I say if two guys miss the cut, you get you get disqualified. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I, that's, that's, yeah, that's fine. And then uh, you do get what the the extra stroke if you're if the guy you pick actually wins the tournament. Is that what it was? Was it one it was, or was it more than one? Nah, I think it was like three, wasn't it? Oh, was yeah, it was three? like three. All right, so we'll do three. So uh, whoever has the first pick will get it with Scheffler, and then they'll get the three points, and then we'll go from there. Um, all right, so we did do the uh, draft off the draft order offline. It was Chalky first, myself, and then Jason. Hoping Chalky does uh, whatever tournament that uh, players and doesn't and doesn't go as Scheffler. But Chalky, the floor is yours. Scheffler may not be my top pick, but I got to take Scheffler. So. Well, if he's not your top pick, then why are you taking him? For value, for value on betting, he's not my top pick. But okay. everybody's got even even odds here, so yes, we'll take Scheffler. All right, Scotty, it is. Um, yeah, I actually like this guy a little bit, and I'm always against him, and I find find myself always getting him. Um, it's Roy. I got to take Roy. I mean, he, the course favors him. All right, this is uh, – no, it's not tough because I got back-to-back. -back. So I'm going to go with Bryson Shambo, and then I'm going to come back and go with Brooks Kepka. Would have been tough if I had a – Miss, you know, not have back to back. Um, yes, I will come back. Let's see, I got. I'll go with um, Auberg, Ch Chunky's boy. Yeah, I know. I was hoping to get him. All right. Um, let's go with Rombo and Cam Young. He's falling for the trap of the long the long hitters will do well here, even though Cam Young blows. Um, Tommy will go with uh go back to Wyndham Clark. He was terrible last week, but I feel like he finds his form back. Back to back. I am gonna take my boy, Xander Shoffley. Yeah, good one. That's who it's that's right. And then I'm gonna also take Joaquin Neiman. Your other boy. He is my other boy. Uh, you know what? Give me a Tommy Fleetwood. He's a good board horse. Yeah. Who doesn't win? Who doesn't win? Um, I mean, you know, board horses are fine here, so I'll take Morikawa. I would take Zaltoris, but I don't know if I trust the back. Uh, I'll take Homa. 
All right, give me uh, one of my my uh, sleepers. Hung on, on, hung on. Believe right? It's on. Uh, yeah, hung on. All right, so I got back to back. I'm taking Cam Smith. And then this one's tough. Uh, all right. I got to go with my boy Tagala again. All right. And then, uh, uh, you know what? Another non winner book is uh, Cantley. Yeah. He was my other pick. It was between him or Tagala. Uh, this last one? That's you. Yeah. You finish it off. Uh, I'll take uh, Gooch. All right, let's jump into it now, boy. PGA Championship, like I said, it's at Valhalla in Louisville. Uh, defending champ is Brooks Kepka. 2014, they played here, which I believe Rory won. Uh, so he is the defending champ at this particular course. So quick things, and I'll, I'll go to Jason. Um, I just got some quick highlights, like, of course, but Jason's a little more. I, it sets up for longer hitters off the tee, so it is a par 71. 7,600, so it's a very long course with a par 71. Fairways are pretty wide. Fairways um, tend to get very good roll, but if you look at the weather report, you got rain up until... So, like, uh, Friday, 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 yeah. a lot of rain. I've, I've, I've heard someone said the fairways are pretty narrow, actually, yeah. It's not... But if it rains, I think the fairways will play wider. Possibly. So I think, like, Friday... I saw I saw like three quarters of an inch of rain Friday with thunder. Friday, storms. Friday seen Friday's very wet, possibly Saturday morning, but it also rained like Monday, and it might yeah, rain today. Today, yeah. So that's okay. going to soften the fairway, so you're going to get less roll. So that yeah, like, right, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're going to get um, a course that's very long, that's not going to get roll. So you're sh- you know those shorter drivers are really going to suffer when they're not getting roll either. Um, so it's going to play even longer than it may. Um, and then, uh, so accuracy could, is going to be important because you don't want to be hitting out of the rough to these, uh, to like have a long approach out to the green coming out of the rough because you won't be able to stop it. Um, and the greens are very large with a lot of slopes, a lot of mounds, and a lot of bumps is what, is what I have. Jason, you want to go through uh, your course? Yeah, so as you mentioned, it's par 71, 76, 7,609 yards. Um, and they did make the course a lot longer than it was in 2014. And they changed up a lot of holes, so it's not exactly the same course it was. Um, I'll just go through a couple of holes, and then I'll uh, I'll go through my points where, you know, I think who's going to, you know, which characteristics will make you excel here? So, um, the first hole, um, right off the bat, they they made tougher than it was in 2014. They le- lengthened it by 38 yards. Um, the second hole uh, also changed. Um, it's now a par four, I believe it was a par five back then. Um, the third hole is just a, it's a tough par three. Skip to the seventh hole. That's the longest hole in the course. It's 597 yards. Um, you know, obviously that's a par five, but then the, the eighth hole comes back as an easier par three. Um, and then uh, starting on the back nine, the tenth hole is a, a kind of an easy par five. Eleventh hole is a par three. Um, they, re- you know, basically you get rewarded with a good shot there, but you really get punished if you don't hit a good shot there. So that that's going to be a good hole to watch. Twelfth um, hole is another hole they lengthened by 27 yards, and it's a really tough par four. Um, the 13th hole is their signature hole, which is 351 yard par four. Um, and then there's sort of like a small island green there. So it's, it's really nice looking hole. If you guys check it out. Um, 16th hole is a 508 yard par four. And then the last hole, 18th hole is a par five. Um, and then there's bunkers on the left and there's water on the right. So that's going to be a really yeah, interesting fair, fairway bends to the right. Yeah. And it's a massive um, green. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting hole to finish on. Um, so the who excels here? So I, I have the driving distance is very important. Obviously, control with that. Um, you want to be long, but you also want to be kind of, you know, not 
not uh not out of the fairway. Um, I I have the shot uh strokes gained approach is important. Uh, strokes gained around the green, strokes gained putting too, which you know usually is always important. But um, seems like uh you'll have some mid mid like you know ten ten foot and in putts are going to be important. So the better putters are going to do well here. There's water on seven of the eighteen holes. There's six two bunkers. Um, it's kind of known as a second shot course. I guess it's a Nicholas course. So yeah, iron player will be important. Um, this new Zoysia grass, apparently you could get like really good spin from the fairway. So you're going to see a lot of shots that are kind of hit the green and kind of like do a spin or stop. And, you know, guys the, that can control their, their shot. The, in. the, the issue with that's going to be pin placement. So if you're hitting into these great massive greens with like huge slopes and, and mounds. Mm -hmm. So depending on what the mm -hmm. pin is, if they're hitting into a down, you know, like a down slope, that ball is not stopping. It's hitting yeah. into an up slope. So I think the pin placement, um, you know, will really factor in as, as the tournament goes on to see, you know, the, the spin rate and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that's it. Um, you know, I have some interesting stats on particular golfers, but we'll get to that when I talk about my picks. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at shots gained off the drive, shots gained off the approach around the green. I mean, there's only one guy that fits it that, that hits that category every single time. Um, Chuck, yeah. did you have any course characteristics? So, uh, not much other than what Jason said. I mean, I. I would say I did my research, but this is analysis I stole from other people that I read, you know, but the driving length and accuracy, obviously. Now, from what I was reading, they were saying, you know, your best ball strikers and approach to the green, obviously they're big around the green, not so much, especially compared to a tournament like the Masters, but obviously you can't be terrible at that. Um, the rough is four to six inches in some places and with the move and the other thing when we talk about comparing it to the um, 2014 um, or 2016, whatever last year was here, that was when the PGA was back at the end of August. So it's earlier in the season now. So as the course changes throughout the year, naturally, it's not going to have the same effect, even if everything was exactly the same. Um, but the PGA is actually the way they're shaping these courses. They're moving more towards the U.S. Open style with making it a little harder to shoot. Um, real big scores than some of the other than they have been in the past with PGA. You've seen some pretty big numbers, which I thought was was interesting. Um, but uh, the uh, and I think the PGA it is a Jack Nicklaus course, and it sounds like the PGA is trying to schedule their uh, tournaments at a lot of the Nicklaus courses is sort of like a thing to him or something. Um, but I, I mean, I. I just a general thing. I, I, I like it being up in May because you get one a month. And I think, especially now with the live, you don't see these guys playing each other week in and week out. So when you get these big tournaments and they went out of their way to invite a lot of the live guys to come play, it is kind of like a little bit of a different feeling because you're not seeing these same guys squaring off on the course, you know, week in and week out. So, And then you even have in March, you have the players. So it's almost like from March through, uh, yeah, I guess through July. You have a, a big tournament every month, once a month. Yeah, and, and you're starting to see like when the the non big tournaments are play are played. I mean, Scheffler, Rory, like those guys just take over these court, like some of these against these fields. Like Rory had won by seven shots at Wells Fargo last week. Scheffler was rolling in the day before the tournament and winning easily. So I mean, at least like Chuck said, you, you get these big tournaments. You're, you're seeing the best golfers kind of level the playing field, and you're not. Hopefully, you won't get these like runaway winners that are kind of the same guys over and over and over. Um, but we shall see. Although uh, we'll find out when we move to Jason. I mean, I guess we'll go to uh, you know who 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 you got. Where are you where are you looking? Yeah. So a couple of couple of stats um, I have, or not stats, but facts, I guess, where. Um, Batia, he mm -hmm. he actually won here in 2018 as a junior, like the junior PGA. So he's going to be prominent. I would my, imagine my, this my... wasn't 7,600 yards when he won. No, no, but you know he's got a feel, a little bit of a feel for the course. So, and then I got a Rory stat. So Rory, since 2019, now has won 
uh, I guess it's five. I don't know if he had or including last week had won five tournaments the week prior to coming into a major and he's still over five in those majors. So, you know, sometimes people say, Oh, he's, you know, the whole hot golfer or, you know, he's in form or this and that, that hasn't helped Rory for the, at least the last five years. So Yeah. But what did he finish in those? Do you have his finishing position? in those Out of curiosity. You know what I'm saying? Like he won. He win. What's that? He won. He, no, the oh, major. What did he, in the majors? I, I don't have. You know, if no, you finish third or fourth or second, like, yeah, I didn't win, but it's still a form. So I yeah. Can. Yeah. So, um, but all right. So do you want my golfers, I guess? Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, so uh, I'm just going to give you like my, your win. Your win guys. Yeah, I'll give you my win candidates and we'll come back yeah, to me for yeah. other bets and stuff. So obviously, I mean, come on. I mean, Scheffler's got to be your number one win candidate. I mean, how, how could he not? Um. I think he's alive to win a Grand Slam, to be honest with you. I think the only tournament that he might struggle British. is, uh, is the British Open. Yeah, for sure. Right? Because, um, you, you know, you have to be a good putter for that uh, usually. So, but, um, you know, he's got to be number one. Number two, after Scheffler, the way I'm looking at this tournament is I think it's either Scheffler or it's Liv. Like, I'm really high on the Liv guys in this tournament. Um, and, like, you know, I guess as you guys saw, I took the Shambo as my number one pick. It was between him or Kepka. Um I think this this course is gonna fit the Shambo and he's he's been really good. Um, you know, he's good in the Masters. He's he's been good in these I think he was good in the players. I don't remember exactly, but um, you know, he's been just consistent this year and uh I think he's a strong candidate to win and his odds, like what is he? I have odds written down here. So 28, um, 28 is the best I got on him at Bet Rivers. I, I, I want to point out, I, maybe you guys can help me. The odds, I may, is it because Scheffler's four to one, but like the odds are crazy. I mean, you got. Yeah. I mean, guys like Fitzpatrick, Matsuyama, 65, Fitzpatrick, 71, Zell Torres, yeah. 75. Like, you're, like, that's almost like them saying they don't have any shot to win, which. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I I kind of think it's like the big guys are going to win this tournament. Yeah, and Real that's. I mean, guys, it is top know. heavy, right? I guess that's yeah. why. But yeah. I, I was that. That was one of the things that stood out to me. It was just yeah. like how big some of these big names are in odds. Yeah. So I got. Um. I did. You know. I did Scheffler bets. Like Bet Rivers was. He was four fifty plus four fifty. I did a straight bet, and then I did our boy uh, Verstappen, who lost last week or his last race so i don't think he's gonna lose back to back um you know to kind of boost his odds up there um i got like i said the shambo at 28 to 1 on bet rivers uh to win he, that was the best odds there i had bet kepka when he won he won and live i think lives last last tournament was like two or three weeks ago after he won i immediately came and bet him at 20 to 1 you, you're not going to find him at 20 to 1 anywhere now um I also, so I have seven guys to win. Um, those are my top three. I think Neiman, I know I was high on Neiman in the Masters. He really hadn't played well. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think Augusta is a good course for him. Um, so he didn't, he didn't play that well at Augusta. Uh, I still think he's, you know, he's one of the best golfers out there. I think he's live this, this, this week. And speaking of him, like I got 40 to one on him. At Bet Rivers, I think that was tremendous odds on him. Uh, Rom, you know you can't forget Rom. You know, I think his odds. You know, I got twenty to one on him at Bet Rivers. Obviously, Bet Rivers is spitting out some good odds uh, for wins. Um, you have to shop around uh, for wins. Bet Rivers was the best, but uh, Rom at twenty to one. Come on, for a major. I mean, he's still minimum still a top five golfer in the world in his prime um and then two two longer shots cam smith I, you know i if you need to putt well there's not a better putter in the game than cam smith um <clears throat> he uh he played well in his last tournament and lives so he's coming at, rounding into form um another guy who's got ridiculous odds um now i got him uh or do I have Cam Smith? I got him 40 to 1 at Bet Rivers, so he's another one. And then if a live golfer does not win, other, you know, if Scheffler or a live golfer doesn't win, 
I'm going to go back to Shoffley again. He's just been so – he's so much in form. And I know he never wins, but one of these times he's going to five five-shot lead going in the third round last week, a one-shot lead going into the final round and got smoked. Yeah. But, I mean, he's still finished second. You know, he's he's always right there. And you got to think at some point he's going to win. And now his odds are terrible. No, and that and that brings me to, and I, he was just somebody that I looked at, um, kind of. With, I think Jim Chalky taught lives this. Like Shoffley is fourteen to one on DraftKings. Yeah, that's um, the best you're gonna find. Yeah, okay, but if you take out Scheffler, you know, like anybody, those those bets where they used to do a tiger, he's eleven to one. So it's almost like, I mean, you buy the Scheffler insurance, right? If you do like a guy like Shoffley, take him out eleven to one with no Scheffler versus. So now he only has yeah. to finish second. And he doesn't have to win. He yeah. doesn't have to win, right? Yeah, that's so a good bet. Or, you know, top five, top ten. Well, yeah, yeah. Like but yeah, I mean, the top five, you're looking. Top ten, he's three to one. I mean, it's not bad. Then. Yeah. So those are my seven. And then, I'll you know, I'll, I'll have longer odds guys that I, like I said, I think one of the big guys is winning this. So these longer odds guys are more like top ten, top 20, and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I... I I mean, I'm not going to give you a whole list of names. I, I'm I'm fading the live guys a little bit this time around. I, I was high on them in the ma- Masters. They they kind of, for the most part, they didn't play that well. I mean, outside of the Shambo, um, Neiman was a little bit of a disappointment. Kepka was a disappointment. DJ was didn't make the cut. Um, yeah, Rom was up and down, and ultimately was not. You know, didn't finish too well. Um, I believe Ken Smith was actually probably one of the better ones, if I recall. Mm-hmm. But like. In all, they didn't really tear it up. So I, I, I mean, I'm, just, you know, I'm going to just fade them here. I, I think Shuffler's going to win this tournament. I, I honest to God, I think Shuffler's going to win. So I'm not going crazy with, with giving out odds. I did allude to the young on hung on or whatever. Um, he's fifty to one. Uh, he's a he's a guy that can drive the ball pretty far, which I think is going to be advantageous to you. And I'm not I'm not going to wave for a longer guy. I'm going to give you my one a guy I legitimately think can can make some noise. And it's Denny McCarthy. He's a uh, you know a hundred good butter. He's a le- he made butter. eleven to twelve cuts this year. He's uh let's see what else is uh six last he was sit he finished six last week at Wells Fargo, which is a longer course. So again, he's not playing with the likes of Kepka and Shambo and all those guys, but he does he did play well in a course that plays for like, and he's an outstanding putter. And he's not necessarily a long putter. He's that 10 to 15 guy that just drains those putts, like Jason was saying. So 110 to 1. Um, I mean, I think he's he's he has a shot. And if you go down the list, I didn't write down his top 10, top 5. He's another guy maybe mix in there. And uh, when we talk about the make the cut, he would be a guy for sure that I have as a make the cut type of guy. Um, so, so I'm just going to give you this. Arthur, you said, Tom? Yeah. He's 20 to 1 top 5, 8 to 1 top 10. Yeah, twenty to one top. I mean, top five is tough, but yeah, twenty one to eight. I mean, that's great, you know, for a guy that got is almost guaranteed to make the cut and can and can putt. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 only gonna go there with Scheffler, Aaron, and and McCarthy as my wins, and then I have I do have a crazy long shot that I'll give it out after Chalky gives his guys. Real quick though, just just to get back to Scheffler before Chalky goes, if you look at his PGA Tour results, the last five tournaments it's just he finished like first first or first second which he lost on a putt like on the 18th hole first first like he's four first and one second in his last five tournaments he's just he he just has so much like there you can go back to tournaments he's playing like okay and then he sinks a chip in for eagle and and then then he goes on a run run. right so it's like he has that in his game He's always going to drive the ball. He's always going to be a distance guy. He's always going to be, um, he's not number one in shots gain off the tee. He's number one in shots gain approach. So if he misses a drive, he's going to get it on the approach. If he, if he's going to crush the drive and now his approach is going to be left. It's always been his putting. We know, we know it's putting. And he's not a right. terrible lag putter at times, meaning, you know, if these huge massive, these, these big yeah. undulations of massive greens, he might not have to drill as many putts. He just might have to, Get him within range. His problem is like those ten footers where he, he doesn't hit. Them. He misses. Yeah, the ones that. But like, he's a good. 
he's good, like you said. If he's thirty feet away, he'll put yeah, it next to the hole. Two yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But the thing is, he hits enough approach shots that are close enough that he has easier putts. Yeah. You know, yeah. It just there's so many parts of his game that is just yeah. He, if he does poorly in one thing, he just makes up for it in in another thing, and he just doesn't hit consistently bad shots. I mean, I watch uh, Xander just like. You know, put the ball in the bunker four straight drives in a row. He's like hitting out yeah. of the bunker on this. Yeah, and you just don't see that from from Chef. Yep. Uh, go ahead, Chuck. Yeah, I mean, I took Chef for number one, so he's the most likely winner of the tournament of anybody. I'm not, I'm not betting him at four to one straight up, just you know, without parlaying him. It's just, I mean, maybe he is the best we've seen in a single season this far, thus far since Tiger. But um, for somebody who's Claiming he was going to walk up the course in the Masters if his wife went into labor. I can't think that he's been totally focused on golf the last week or two. So, four to one, just not taking that. But yeah, he's most likely winning. He showed up on Wednesday for that one tournament. And I, I'm just, you know, I mean, he might be a machine. I get it. Just, but yeah, he's you know. just so much better than anybody. Um, of the other ones, I, I the next tier, I, I do like Kepka. I, 16 to one right now in DraftKings. Jason covered him. Um, guy I liked in the Masters, Alberg. Um, did well at the Masters, one of the best ball strikers, 22 to 1 right now. Would take a uh, shot with him at that. Um, next tier down, Neiman as well. Jason covered him. Cam Smith and Cam Young. Smith, 45 to 1. Young, 50 to 1 right now. Um, and my two longer shots, who so I would probably say more of a top 10, top 20, but um, guys that. You know, our discussions and picks and other tournaments kind of got me looking at it, focusing on a little more. Strock is 90 to 1. Kirk is 150 to 1. Um, they may not, I mean, Straka, Straka is, I feel Straka is better as sitting on a bigger one maybe than Kirk, but Kirk finished top five, but two years ago in this. And, you know, 90 and 150 to 1, those are Straka probably. Was a guy. Strzok was a guy who was in range last week, and he just kind of yeah. fell apart. Strzok is very much in form, and he's one of my picks co coming up. So, I, I, I know, like Strzok a lot. It, it, I, I almost took Strzok instead of Gooch uh, for the, my last pick, um, which is also 90 to 1. But, um, yeah, I like both of those at very, very long prices, and maybe one of them catches fire. The only thing about Oberg is, Oberg is he, he withdrew from last week's tournament yeah, with an injury. It, that, so, that they have a little bit of concern there for sure. Yeah. Um, but if he's healthy enough, he's been playing well. Yep. Yeah. Jason, did you want to run through? You said you had a couple long shots and then maybe if you had anything, I, I will say, let me actually, uh, so Kevin did throw out. Um, so he did send him make the cut guy, which we'll talk about, but he has Wyndham Clark at 45 to one. He didn't give a whole list, but Clark was, uh, was his, the guy he picked. So. Somebody out there. Yeah, Jay. Yeah, so, um, I mean, well, might as well start with Straka. I mean, he's one of my guys that I've bet to finish top 10. And I got, um, actually, I didn't bet him yet because I'm still fishing for odds. But the best, he's basically plus 750 everywhere to finish top 10. I'll have to do that bet tonight. But um, top 20 also, he's plus 300. So his odds are pretty much the same throughout every sports book. Um, so again, he's not a guy, I don't, I don't think he could win, but he could definitely hang around. Um, the other guy is Batia, like Badia, however you say his name. Bah like, Bahadi, Bahadi, ba yeah. Badia, I Bahadi, think it yeah. is, but he's, he's been really consistent lately. Um, he's young and up and coming and another guy, he's, he's not going to win, but, um, if you look at him, top 10, he's 10 to one at Tipico. But he really uses, but he's usually he's nine to one everywhere else, top ten, and he's plus three ninety for top twenty, um, and he's a guy, he's a make the cut guy for me, um, and for him to make the cut, he was like minus one ninety or something at Fanduel. Other guys, the gala, um, another guy, I you know I I bet all the time, um, I don't think he could win. I mean, he puts you know, he puts together crazy crazy rounds and stuff so you know not a bad long shot um to lead after the first round which everybody i basically gave you um either, whether it was a win bet 
or top ten, top twenty, I have bet for them to win to lead after the first round. <laughs> who so who guys, yeah, you said Jason? I'm sorry, I missed it. Tigala. Tigala oh, yeah, yeah. is my last guy. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> he is uh I got him at sixty to one to lead after the first round on FanDuel. Uh Straka was seventy five to one. Body it was a hundred to one. So, you know, threw those in, um, you know, along with the top ten, top twenty. Um the gala top ten is plus five fifty and top twenty is plus two forty. Uh so those are all bets I made. Um I, I really like those first round bets because, you know, it really makes Thursday like a, a fun, you know, an interesting uh, round to watch because you know you want to at least I I and I I hit it with the Masters I had the Shambo so um, I immediately won most of my bet money back with that bet so uh, like I said every, everybody I gave you um, I am betting to lead after the first round as well um yeah and I'll give you my one long shot I have and this is going to be my make the cut guy if there's odds out there on him I'll keep probably looking up. Taylor Moore. So he's uh he's two hundred to one to win the tournament, uh, but he's made every cut this year. He hasn't missed a single cut. Uh, his only weakness is putting. So he's a good ball striker. He can hit the ball long. However, in the, over the last uh, few months, he's improved his putting. He's actually a positive on shots gained at this point of a point oh four. So like middle of the road, but improving. So maybe you know the thing the thing with putting is like. Bad putters can putt well for a tournament and then go back to being bad putters again, right? I've seen guys who don't putt that well, catch fired, you know, whatever, they're, they're, the rhythm is good. And if you got a guy that can ball strike whose weakness is maybe putting, you can get hot for four days and, and win a tournament. And typically their guys are going to be higher odds. Obviously, there's reasons why. They also can continue to be poor and really look bad and play poorly. Um, but that's why he's 200 to 1 to, to win the tournament. So Talon Moore is a guy um, that I was looking at as a long shot play. A top 10, top 5, you know, all the stuff Jason said. Chalky, did you have anything on the long shots? No, I mean, Strzok and Kirk at 90 and 150. I bet you them in before. So, you know, they're more top 20 plays, but... Um, I think those are good odds for the win, even so. All right. Did you want to try to? Um, I mean, we don't have anything else, right? We kind of gave it all. We'll, we'll build a. We'll build a cut bet. You know where we I'll give. Tell it. You, I'll tell you one. One thing I'm going to bet is I'm going to. If I can't find it anywhere, I've been looking. Maybe it'll show up tomorrow somewhere. But I would love to bet Shoffley versus McElroy. I think Shoffley's going to beat McElroy in this tournament. Unless they have. Uh, unless they're like it's paired good. up together, don't they usually not match? Uh, I mean, I found Shoffley versus Kepka, I think. Um, so, I found some matchups. Well, one thing I saw, I did see, uh, looking at Jeff, they have a top senior play. So Phil, I saw that. Phil, yeah. John Daly is playing in this tournament. Yeah, yeah, he was. He's got his beard's about five feet long, and he was smoking a heater on the driving range. Oh, oh, that's <laughs> great. I would love to see him be playing on. The, <laughs> on the, oh my god, that would be so great. Uh, he yeah. was the longest odds as the top senior, so I'm assuming his game is not not where it, where it normally where it should be. Uh, but I thought that was interesting. Oh, uh, there's yeah, there was a bet. Uh, who's got, which former winner will finish the highest? I wonder if he that's uh, if you see if he's on that top. Oh, why? Right. Let's let's build this cut up and then we'll move to the Preakness. So um, I don't know if some Jason or Jimmy has it up. If you want to plug these in, so I do have uh, Kevin's. Make the cut guy. Hogard. If you want to uh, plug him in. Yeah. See him? I, I'm not finding to make the cut on DraftKings. Jason, you have anything up? Uh, is that bet, is that bet up yet since it's early? Uh, well, Kevin gave me odds on it, but I don't okay. know. Okay, so he at. has him. Yeah, I'm looking. I just looked through everything. I, I'm sure I missed it, but that's. Um, I mean, if we can't find it, if Kevin's got it, we'll. I mean, we'll just have Kevin put the bets in if he knows where he found them at. Um, but I will say, so I mean, we can give your guy. So yeah, so whoever Kevin chalky's was, uh, guy Nikolai is. Hogard. I said mine was going to be Taylor Moore. 
Yeah. Um, Chalky. I'm I'm Batia. But I'll, go, I'll go Straka. Yeah. So without having the, the odds and all, obviously we can't tell you what. Probably going to be around four to one, five to one. Yeah, I would think. I would. Think, I mean, minus one thirty. I think Hogar was minus one thirty, which is pretty. That's pretty low for make the cup. With body, it was like one ninety minus one ninety. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I might have two more. Ends, uh, so I don't know. All right. Well, let's move on here to the uh, Preakness. So we're moving on yeah. to the Preakness. It is Saturday. Uh, we're going to go horse by horse. Quick weather report that you guys, what was the rain. latest? Is it looking like rain for sure? Yeah. Should be sloppy. Oh, it's like off track rain, like enough rain. Yeah, it's like a half an inch of rain. Okay. All right, so we're looking at a seven o'clock Eastern time as the as the as the race goes off. It's crazy. Um, model three sixteenths, grade one, obviously Preakness. We do have the return of Mystic Dan, the Derby winner, uh, which we talked slightly about last week. And you do have two Bafferts running against him. You got a Chad Brown, and then you got a little bit of slop in between. So, um, all right, let's jump right into it, and we'll I'll go around the horn like I always do. I haven't really listened to much, so I, I might be butchering this. Mugatu. Okay, there we go. Jason, yeah. thoughts, on, thoughts on thoughts I'm going to be very quick. He has zero chance. He is a last place type of horse. He could finish yeah. last. Chalky, any, any, any last. Case? All right, so let's move on to the two. Uncle Heavy, that's a uh, Bobby Reed horse, ridden by Irad Ortiz. So this was a horse that had a little bit of steam going into the Wood Memorial, if you remember. Um, he got bet down to nine to one, almost ten to one. Um, he was kind of eliminated right off the bat. He did run well afterwards. I mean, the race kind of collapsed a little bit. Um, to finish fifth, he comes back. He's got an eye ride. I mean, this this to me is a horse that definitely can like third if he's lucky, fourth more than likely. But also could just be totally off the board, Jason. Yeah, I mean I have the same notes. It's it's uh it's Reed and Irad. He gets Irad, so you know that's obviously a, a jockey upgrade. He does like slop, so uh, yeah. I don't. I yeah, he's two for two in slop. So I you know I don't think he's fast enough to win. Um, but for, bomb for a board, like you said. Um, the only issue I have is you know Irad. Like if he if he's not going to win, is he going to ride him hard enough to get third or fourth? You yeah, know, he, you know the, what I read does. Yeah, he kind of he kinda like, you know, mails it in if he's not going to win. Uh, but if not, I I agree. I mean, I think he could, you know, pass horses and and you know, especially if he's like in the off going, he could, he could get third or fourth. Just depends on if I read feels like put, making him get third or fourth. Yeah, I mean that he, like I said, he was kind of eliminated at the wood, but he did he did still manage fifth in that race, and you know coming off coming past some tired horses, so could do the same. Yeah. Chalky ceiling if the race falls apart is third, no chance to win, and if he gets third, it's because I rat, but the horse does not seem to be that talented. Yeah, he's slow. I mean, he's definitely slow on the on the speed figure numbers. All right, let's go to the uh, the three. It's catching freedom. Brad Cox, I, um, Flavian Pratt finished fourth in the Derby. Um, he ran pretty well. I mean, he's he's run well. Um, Chalky, you're up. Yeah, I mean, only looking at the buyers, he's speed. You know, he he matched up his highest buyer. It was only a couple points slower than the winner. Um, wasn't really. I mean, he got into it at the end. He was coming from far back. Uh, um, he can hit the board. I don't think it's going to set up for him to win. I, I really don't. Um, yeah, I'm probably not going to gonna play him. I'm probably not going to play him in the trifectas at all. But I, I, I don't think it's going to set up for him to win coming from deep like he has before. Yeah, it's a horse that needs a setup. Um, he needs the race to be quick up front. The Derby was quick, a hot pace, and he closed into it. Louisiana Derby was a hot pace. He closed into it. The Risen Star was a high pace. He closed into it. 
Smarty Jack, like he's gotten good setups and he's run well because of that. Um, not that you can fault him for that. And this is another one where he's going to need the setup. Um, you know, he didn't run bad. He, he ran pretty well in the slop before. So I don't think that's necessarily going to hurt him. But I I mean, he definitely can get second. But I would probably lean um, to maybe playing against him six to one. I mean, he, he's a kind of horse that he could float up. Because I think since these morning lines are kind of bad. There's a couple horses that are going to drop down. So, yeah, you might be able to get double digits on a horse like this and now move him into the exotics that might play well. So uh, second is the ceiling for him. Probably third more than likely if he does get the perfect setup. Um, you know, he, he'll be there in the end, but more than likely third. Jason? Yeah, I mean, kind of like you guys have said, It's well, first of all, it's Cox and Pratt. You know, guys know I like Pratt a lot. And that this really isn't a move that Cox makes a lot bringing a horse right back uh, to run in, a, in two weeks. Um, so it makes you wonder, makes you think. But, um, I, and I think he's really good. But, it, like, you know, Chalky had said, when you guys, you said also, like, I, I just don't think he's going to get the pace he needs in this race to, to win. Um, I might have, like, one crazy ticket where, you know, I want to pick three if I'm, you know, if, I don't know if I'm really thin somewhere that I might have him to win, but I I doubt it. I mean, he would be a C at best if we're doing ABCs. Yeah, but... you just hate horses that like absolutely need to get set up. Yeah, he win. needs yeah in a race that needs... doesn't look like he's gonna get the set up. So now you... unless I don't know, maybe Pratt keeps him closer to normal, and maybe maybe he's got that kick that he just goes by horse. I don't know. I again, um, you know, I think there's three horses that could win this race. He's not one of them, but if he won, would I be shocked? No. You know? Yeah. All right. Well, that brings us to the four Moose. He is the eight to five morning line favorite, Bob Baffert. Uh, Jason, it's your turn. Is this one of the hor three horses that you think can win? Yeah. I mean, you guys know uh, that I've said for weeks now, I think Baffert's going to win the Preakness. Um, and you know, you know, I really have no no knocks on this horse. Um, he's the only knock is going to be his odds, right? He's oh, he's eight to five. He's going to be the favorite. Um, he's definitely one of my three horses. I think could win. Um, I know I'm not saying anything earth shattering about him. Um, the one there is like somewhat of a question about if, whether he wants the distance or not. But uh, you know, he, he's he's. If I have three A's, he's got to be one of them. It's and it's it's Baffert, as I've said, and Juan Hernandez is the jock. Yeah, I I mean he's one of the horses that I have. I think he sits the trip. That's like I'm sitting right off the speed. Um, you know, going to make a move kind of around the stretch. So I I think the distance for him, yeah, it's a question mark. But he's the type of horse like he does make that. He's going to stalk. He's going to make the move, and I think he holds he can hold off the horses coming because they're going to be tiring too. You know, you know how these races are. The question is, is he able to pass the horse that's going to be in front of him? Uh, and we'll get to him a little bit later on because I don't think he's going to have like that blazing move to pass the horse. I think he's going to grind it out up front to where if horses have to catch him, I think he's fine. Um, but getting past the horse, I'm not sure about, but he's definitely on my A line. Uh, Chalky? Yeah, he's my lone A, I guess. You know, they, he, his one, you know, big defeat was when Fierceness freaked in the, in the juvie, had another one in the stakes race. That was one term, but um, they sued to try to get him into the derby. That didn't work. So they've obviously been aiming for this. And I I don't know that he's not going to be on the lead. There's the, the other pace is probably going to come from the far outside, which can get there. But I don't know that Hernandez isn't going to try to get him out there and just kind of look along easily and maybe steal a little bit if they think the distance is a concern, which I, you know, I don't know if they do. I, I mean, the 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 other Baffert was faster early. There's no question yeah. about the other Baffert. I'm, I'm, just, I'm not convinced that Moose is going to let him go to the lead. But, you know. Um, I don't think he has an option. I mean, I, and I think it's the only way he gets to the lead is if the Tory just decides to take off from the far outside. I think if, if Juan yeah. Hernandez decides that he wants to try to you know, 
duel for the lead. I think Juan Hernandez might not ever get another Baffert. No, again, the, the so. Bafferts are not. The Bafferts are not going to run themselves into the ground. Spoiler alert is why another one of his horses it might be a win candidate for me. But um, he's the most likely winner. He's the favorite. It's nothing special to make that pick, but my eight horse. Uh, all right, let's go to show Chalky. It's your turn. Let's go to the uh, the Derby winner, Mystic Dan. He's listed as five to two. I I think he's going to be higher than that as when at post. Although the Derby winner, I get the guess does get bad, obviously. But um, what what's your thought? So I, I was right with Jason about wanting to bet against him with both hands, and then I I watched the Derby again and. He got the trip, but he also made a really nice move there coming into the stretch where uh, Sierra Leone and Forever Young were making their runs. They were moving, and then he made his, and he just put distance between them, and then they came and almost got him in the end. But it was a little bit impressive watching it. The, the wet would definitely move him up a little bit. He freaked on last time. I'm still not going to put him as a win candidate. Um, I think... Even if things don't go, because comp- he's probably going to be a little close to the pace, which he's done before, but his most his best races have been from a little farther back. It's going to be hard for me to, to leave him off like the board. And so I was a little more impressed with his derby watching it again. I'm not going to use him to win, though, because I don't know if he'll get the setup he really wants either. Yeah, I mean, he's a horse that, like, I'm not, I, I would not say first, of course. I wouldn't use that. McPig has not proved to keep horses in form, especially off two weeks. Like, that Jason alluded to, I don't know if it was on air or if it was off off air. Like if you look at Tharagrass with McPig, um, it's McPig if anybody has the trainer. Um, his horses are like sporadic. They run well, mm-hmm. they run bad. I'm assuming it has to do with his chemistry set, but there's times where like you just have no idea how they're gonna run. And he has he doesn't with good horses has he like in four. I mean he had golden ticket or whatever in the Travers, it was a hundred to one, like they just, they're, they're chaotic. So to say he's yeah. going to come back in two weeks in a race that they were like, I don't know if I want to run him in, in a race that he got the perfect setup in the derby, regardless of a movie made, he was on the ramp, he was ran the shortest way around the track the whole way. Um, I, he's a stone cold play against for first and second. I mean, yeah, you don't want to, if he gets third, you want to not have him on a trifecta if it's, you know, something that might be juicy, but um, he's a play against for me by far. Jason. Yeah, and like like you had mentioned about, you know, McPeak not keeping horses in form. Like he's another horse that just like fierceness was last week or you know, last two weeks ago, he's on his every other pattern of running a good race, running a crappy race, running a good race. Well, we know he ran a good race in the derby, so he's he's on that pattern to, to kind of regress. So uh, he just got a perfect trip in the dirt, just an absolutely perfect trip. The rail opened up for him, you know, uh, but he's, he's just a bet against for me. Um, he could definitely get the board, obviously, you know, th- horses that win a derby usually stay in form, right? Even if you go back to mind that bird, who was not a good horse, he won the derby and he almost won the Preakness. Like he. He almost caught Rachel Alexander at the end of that Preakness. So I think the horse will sort of be, still be in form. Uh, total bet against the win. I think, like, okay, yeah, he did run well in the slop, but did he run well in the slop because he was on a rail that was, like, a golden rail? Or did he just run well in the slop? I don't know. I think he's going to... I think he's going to get bet if it's sloppy. Uh, and... I mean, he's going to get bet one way or the other. He's a derby winner. But I think he might get – his odds might, you know, kind of be be hit if, if it's slop. And I, I'm I'm betting against them. Uh, third third place at, at best for me. Okay. And that's how I'm – all right. The six, this brings us to the six. He's the great one of two Lucas horses in the race. He did win the Pat A mile. This is a my race horse. So he's a 50 or more line that might actually be lower because of the my race horse angle. Um, you know, they pull together and tend to get back. I mean, stretching out from the one turn mile, you know, he's he's got early pace figures, but he doesn't, if you look at his PPs, he doesn't really, I mean, he's coming out of sprints at times, but his route races, he wasn't really on the lead. I, I'm assuming he's going to make one run. Um, and like, he does not look 
like a horse that would factor in this race at all for me talking. He's not going to factor for any of the payouts on the exotics. The question is, is does, does he gone and screw up the pace scenario, but he's not, he's not in the top four. Yeah. To, uh, Jason. Yeah. I have the same thoughts. Like he's stretching out. He's really the only one in the race that's stretching out. So can he try to go to the lead? I don't know. Who knows? You know, Lucas has another horse. Maybe Lucas has a plan. Uh, I don't have any interest for him at all to hit the board, but he might affect the race. Yeah, so that brings us to Lucas's other horse, the seven, Just Steel. Now, this to me, he looks like the fast, like the horse that will be on the lead. I mean, he was, he ran, he ran, uh, he set the pace in the Derby, right? I mean, he was a horse that was pushing fierceness and for the first um, first quarter at least, and then he just completely fell off the face there. He's got the Puerto Rican Strangler on him. Um, so maybe he doesn't send him to the lead. I, I don't know, but, um, he's a horse again, that could factor in the race as far as pace, but has no shot. Jason. For me, he's an interesting board horse. I mean, he's going to get Rosario. I don't know if he's going to go to the lead because, you know, that obviously didn't work last, last race. Uh, maybe he does. I don't know. You know. Rosario sometimes, like you said, kind of holds horses back a little. I kind of think he'll sit mid-pack, and, I, you know, I liked him a little bit in the Derby. Uh, maybe he just shouldn't have been up close to that pace, and obviously Lucas didn't like the way he was ridden in the Derby because he replaced Asmussen with Well, Rosario, Rosario so. rode this horse many times in the past, so I think Rosario just also had a mount, and he's going to give it to him over. Yeah, Rosario him. was open for this race. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it was necessarily a takeaway. Yeah. But I'm going to, I'm, I'm not throwing him out for the board. Like I think he's a horse that could get third. Yeah, the only thing, I mean, the times Rosario did ride him, he ride, rode him on the piece as well too. So I just don't see him how he's not going to be part of it. Chalky. I mean, he's got an interesting pattern on the buyers where he, he runs a decent race, rests a little, runs better, regresses a little, which would make this primer. I like the angle sometimes of like half decent horses who run on the derby pace and it's too hot and they collapse running back in the Belmont. I don't like that angle in the Preakness. He, you know, halfway through the race, he was done. I don't know how Lucas is going to have him ready in two weeks to be close to win here. So he's not going to be. I might put him third somewhere, but that's it. All right, brings us to the um, the eight, which is Chad Brown trying to trying to pull the uh, I can't think of his name. He's uh, Claire Computing, right? Where he 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 was early in his career, and he won and a couple years, two years early voting. With early early voting was the other one. Yeah, I knew there was another Uh, Tuscan Gold. uh, This is the one that that eight, the one does. Not look like he's going to be close to eight to one at post. It just seems like a very bad morning line. Jason, uh, we'll give this to you. Yeah, I mean he's one of my my three top picks to win. Uh, he's third off the layoff. His buyers are increasing. Uh, you know he he was very wide in the, the uh, Louisiana Derby or was it Louisiana Derby or Arkansas Derby? Louisiana, Louisiana. 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 Yeah, yeah. So uh, he shouldn't sit too far off. Uh, like you said. There's zero chance he's going to be eight to one. Um, if he's eight to one, that's a crazy win bet. But um, it's Brown, who I think has been pointing this horse for a, a while now to this race. Uh, I think he's very live. Yeah, I have the same thoughts. I mean, if you watch the Louisiana Derby, he he was kind of close. He came from the far outside. He was kind of close to the pace, uh, but he was wide on the pace. That that pace is what was fast and it kind of collapsed. Two horses catching freedom and Anna Marie came fly came came from the far outside to pass and and he was the only horse that kind of stayed there and he he hung he got third pretty easily. Um, those horses did blow by him, but he he was also never in doubt of not getting third. Um, so I do see an improvement off of that race with a better trip. He bypassed the Peter Pan, which he was entered in last week to run here. And the horse that won the Peter Pan is actually a horse that was in the Louisiana Derby. Um, we uh, liked him. Aquarian. Aqu- 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 yeah, Aquarian. yeah, yeah. Aquatarian so or something like that. He came out of the Louisiana Derby and, and, won, and won the Peter Pan. So, yeah, I, I mean, he's 
I, he's an A for me. Like I, I, I had trouble separating like the top three horses myself. Um, and he's one that like is going to get a good, good trip because he should sit like right in that second flight, but towards the front and get good run on the leaders. Um, you know, so I, I think he's a, he's an A for me as well. Chalky. Yeah. He's my second win candidate. Maybe more of a B than an A if we're ranking him like that. But I mean, if he takes another step forward, he's got every right to win the race with that kind of improvement. And um, I think he's going. He, I think he's going to be vying for second choice. I mean, I'm thinking he's going to be somewhere around five to one, more than eight to one. But um, you think second choice will be five? Yeah, to I one? don't think he'll be over. Mr. I think he'll be. I, I I think there's there's three horses that could be second choice. He might. He might be five one might be in third choice depending on how uh, Mystic Dan gets back, but I think I I think it's more likely he's five to one than eight to one. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna be eight to one. I think there's, there's a shot. No chance. Yeah, that that. But I yeah I don't. I just meant I didn't. I don't think second. I I don't think the second horse is gonna be five to one. I think the second. It's gotta be like no. I, I would say I don't think it's. I don't. I don't think the second horse will be five to one. I'm saying he'll be in the mix for that, but he might be third choice at five to one, seven to two, second choice or something. All right. So then uh, brings us to our last horse, which is the other Baffer. He is six to one morning line. Imagination, who ran in the uh, San Diego Derby, lost the Stronghold, who ran pretty well actually in the Derby. Um, Chalky, you're up to finish this off as the to go first. Yeah, I mean, this would be the other horse I would throw in there. I would hate to lose to the other baffer, but, you know, it's another million-dollar horse without a lot of pace. Like we're saying, it looks like he's going to be, you know, the one horse, if you think he's faster again, he's going to be out there. And if he gets out there, is loping along slow, Moose might sit right off him, but I don't want to get I don't want to get beat on a horse that's out there setting a slow pace. We've seen Baffer do it before. And, you know, he got beat in the San Diego Derby, which was, which was a decent pace. It wasn't slow. Um, so... Yeah, I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let the nine beat me. Um, so he's in the mix. Yeah, he was another one of my my A's, and I actually might like him a little more than Muth if I had to rank the two. I mean, I do think they're all three between Tusk and Gold Muth and that are are pretty close. Um, the, I actually thought Sandy the there was a fast pace, and you know Stronghold came from off, and he kind of rebid and almost almost was able to hang on. Um, you know, the fourth and fifth place horse, I think, came back and won and improved their buyers. Pretty, pretty big, pretty big jump to where they were listed. Me and Jason were talking offline. And I think Jason said the uh, the race was actually, um, they might have made the buyer too low in this race. So that 89 buyer looks like it was probably should be closer to like mid 90. Um, and it yeah. makes sense. I'd like to see the sheet on this one. I'm thinking the sheet's going to be. Yeah, solid. I would think so too. But it makes sense if now the fourth and fifth place horses came back and ran a 77 and, a, and 101 in their next start to win. So, yeah, he's one of those. And I, you know, he's going to have to be used to get to, the, I think, like the Tory, the only, unless he doesn't break, the Tory has to send him. He's the fastest horse in the race early-wise. He's got to get, he's got to out-sprint the Lucas horses. I think he's going to out-sprint the Baffert. So if he breaks, which I don't see why he wouldn't, especially at that outside post, the Tory's going to send him. Um, yeah. And... You know, you could see the Tory sending him, and then all of a sudden, like it looks like he's going fast, and he he wrangles him in, and all of a sudden that fast pace looks slowed up drastically. And this is the horse I was alluding to, where I said a Muth has to pass the horse in front of him, and I don't know if he does. I don't know if he has enough of that move to pass a, a, a horse that doesn't have, you know, the strongest of paces. So if I had to pick a horse to win on top i would this is the horse i would go with is an imagination um but again i i move with imagination and uh, tuscan go all are very very high win candidates on on my sheets jason yeah so the nine imagination baffert and the Tory. uh this is the other baffert i mean how many races have we seen where the other baffert wins right uh is apparently training really well coming into the race um Baffert, I think, said that this this is a horse that like he sees is one that's improving, you know, as he as he's getting older into his three year old uh, season. So I I like his post being nine. I think the Tory, you know, 
there's no way he's going to have traffic trouble. I mean, he's going to, if he breaks outward, that's fine. You know, however he breaks, if the Tory wants to go to the lead, I think he's going to put him on the lead. You know, move, but being four, you never know. If move doesn't get it out of the gate and gets traffic trouble, then he's done. He's not, he's not going to have the lead. So, uh, it's, it's a race that we've all said, there's really not a ton of speed in the race. Um, there's a potential kinda, for speed, but there's also potential for no speed. Like it's like one of those. Yeah, and and yeah. usually when that happens, what is we usually don't see speed. Usually no right? speed. Yeah. And I, I, I kinda agree. I mean, he I, I probably do like him better than, than Moot. Um I it's hard it's hard to kind of separate the top three choices, but pretty much in every one of my multi bets, I'm using those three on top and that that's pretty much gonna be it. Maybe maybe a long flyer on catching freedom, but that's it. Did you anybody have a trifecta that they wanted to get out, or are we? I, I didn't have one. I, um, Jason, I you. Yeah, I have. Um, I I took a quick look at the Black Eyed Susan. I kind of like a single in that race. I thought the eight recharge for Asmussen and Rosario looks like lone speed, right? So, and he's seven to two morning line. He's not the favorite. Uh, I don't know. You know. Morning line seemed to be bad, so I don't know if he's going to wind up being, she's going to wind up being the favorite or not. But, you know, I'll, I'll do a Black Eyed Susan Preakness double single in the eight, uh, recharge in the Black Eyed Susan, and then using the three that we mentioned in the Preakness, the four Muth, the eight Tuscan Gold, and then the nine Imagination. Um, I'm also going to try a straight try. Uh, you know, uh, Maybe not straight, but I'm just going to use four eight nine as one of my like try boxes. Uh, I'll do exactas with four eight nine, with then three four eight nine on the second line, trying to just beat Mystic Dan. And then I'll I'll probably play a super. Um, you know, you you kind of have to kind of narrow it down on the top line. So I might try to beat Muth on the top line and just maybe use eight nine on the top line, and then just coat kind of thin on the second line. You know, third. Third line using almost everybody, but you know, throwing out horses that have absolutely no chance. But then the fourth line, I mean, Uncle Heavy is it definitely a horse that could get fourth. Catching Freedom obviously could get fourth, and maybe Just Steel. You know, maybe I'll just single those those three horses on the fourth line. Yeah, how about you, Chuck? Did you have anything before we sign off here? Uh, I mean, I almost the same, but with the. Uh... Black Eyed Susan, bring this double, but I also will, well, I'll use the number five gun so long in the Black Eyed Susan a little bit. So I'll play against the favorite. Um, but that's and not. Who's the favorite in that race? Corposo. It's, a, it's Erton. Cal it's a, yeah. I mean, I'm you know, we're talking about who's not running fast in the Preakness. Uh, none of these horses spun the fires. So she's yeah. running as fast as any of them. So, I, you know, I'll, I'll throw her in on the double. All right. Episode 107, we got the PGA, we got the Preakness. Um, just going to throw this out here before we PGA, we got the Preakness. Um, just going to throw this out here before we sign off. Uh, Philly's magic number to win the NL East is 108. Back to our regular show. Um, I don't know what we're talking about. Have a great night.